So first of all, thank you, Jimmy, for joining me. And um, let's start a bit about your voice and your voice in your career. Why is your voice so important to your career? Hi, Maria. Well, I, I've been a, uh, a singer, um, performer for, um, wow, uh, 20 years um, plus. I don't want to give my, my age away. Um, <laughs> and, um, so it, for me, the, the, the vocal, vocal techniques was, um, when I started having singing lessons about, about the same time, the, that was a, a big insight to, to um, you know, the, the ability to be able to control the voice and to be able to sustain the voice for endless nights, uh, doing concerts, doing gigs on tour, etc. So that was, for me, it was a, it was a, it was a no brainer really to have, to have, to have that, that the, the control over you was the vocal technique. Um, so that's, uh, uh, yeah. So that, that's, and then so the voice for you is important because you use it as a singer. And what kind of singing do you do then? What, what well, you... I, I'm, a, I'm a, a, jazz, a jazz singer. I've, I've, I've been told I have a pop sensibility. So I teach, um, I teach also vocal technique as well to pop singers. Um, some of them uh, do uh, you know, audition for X Factor, um, things like that. So I teach at a couple of colleges in London, vocal technique. But I, I'm predominantly jazz singer, string singer but that's, that's really my stylistic choice overall. <laughs> And my favorite kind of music. So you're in, that's good, super. And how did you become a voice coach yourself? Well, I, um, I realized a, a few years ago that, um, uh, probably about four or five years ago now, that there's a direct correlation between um, singing and speech. So there's, it's the, the, the vocal text that techniques that we use to, for, for singing um, are directly related to um, to speaking. I mean, the only difference really is that we hold on vowels when we're when we're singing and when we're speaking, they, we cut them off or we separate them with consonants. So, really, the the physicality of the muscles that we use and the the area of of, of a chest and the head that we use to create a sound is exactly the same as we, what we might do when we when we're speaking. So, um, I I mean, I'll t I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, it, little little bit of a story it's very very boring but i i was at a party and i was i was i because i teach singing and i'm really really fascinated with the voice i i said to the chap that i was talking to at a party uh it was a eurovision party actually um and um i said look you know i can pretty much tell pretty much anyone who's got a slight issue with their voice and what they might want to work on and what they there's maybe there's a gap in the uh, in their area of their voice that they could they could um, they could explore, uh, he said absolutely. I mean, I'm in advertising, and uh, all the time we're expected to do uh, meetings, presentations, etc. And that and some, so some help in that area would be would be great. Just to you know to to just to explore and really uh, find other areas of the voice, or whether it be to sustain the voice. Uh, to create more resonance, etc. So it's, it's um, it seemed a, a, a natural um, progression for me to go from vocal or to continue teaching and singing to uh, to help people with their with their voice. Fantastic, and it's amazing actually when you know your subject. It's very easy then to help other people, isn't it? So, sure. um, as a speaker and a singer, the voice is the instrument, and I'm surprised actually how many speakers I work with that don't have any kind of vocal training or vocal techniques. Um, sure. What are the benefits then if you are if you've got a vocal exercise regime, if you like? What are the benefits that you will see in your voice if you do work on it? I think the main thing for me is the. Uh, the, the the effortless um, um, the the amount of effortless energy that you might require from vocal exercises or voice exercises um, to to make a sound and actually to produce much longer phrases. I think the main thing is to is we you know I work on really relaxing the, the area of the larynx, um, exploring the uh, the head and nasal cavity and the chest resonance. So we're really um, we're really sort of manipulating every aspect of of, of the physiology of 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 the, of the sound that we can create through the body. Um, just there's there's I mean for instance breathing, which I'm well, I'm sure we'll probably talk about a bit later on. You know, just that just the the, the main sort of the basic technique of breathing correctly um, allows you to be able to sustain um, your voice for a much longer longer time without it becoming dry 
um, and hurting actually. I get a lot of people that, that, have, that suffer from tight and, and, and red um, throats because they've been speaking for a long time. Brilliant. So should you exercise your voice every day? Absolutely. I, I, it's, um, I mean, I, I do it. I, I walk around the house doing it all the time. It's a natural thing for me. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily, well, I, actually, I do do it in public, but I wouldn't necessarily advise doing it in public. Uh, you know, I put the kettle on and I'm waiting for the kettle. And as I'm waiting, I might do, I might do a couple of, I might do, or I might do, ah, things like that, just to open up, um, soften the vocal folds, open up the area of the larynx and the head, and just to, uh, just to warm up the sound. Because at some point, I'm going to be speaking during the day, and it's probably a good idea just to, um, or teaching, you know. So it's something that uh, if you can do every day as part of your routine, I think it definitely, definitely help to do, have, have, a, have a routine of, of two or three things. I have two or three things that I do every single day. But that, and I've, there's a hundred, hundreds of techniques that you can do, but just two or three things. Uh, it's exactly the same as if you were to do yoga or Pilates or something. You have maybe two or three, uh, you know, positions or stances or, or, or um, routines that you might do every day that might take 10 minutes. Oh, so actually, 10 minutes is not too bad, really. Sure. Um, that's not a bad commitment. OK. And so it's, if you're doing this every day, do you still have to warm up before a speech or would your voice already be warm? Well, I, 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 I mean, because I'm a professional singer um, and voice coach, it's something that I do, uh, you know, I, I, I not only warm up, but I also do exercises every day as well. So I might spend an hour actually, you know, singing um, in exercises to uh, not just to, to keep my voice in trim, but to improve my voice every day. So that's a different thing possibly for me. But I also not only do, you know, warm up exercises and um, practice routines, I, before I go on stage, and something that I teach people to go on stage is, is just a, a couple of things that you can literally do as you walk on stage. So for instance, I do a, we we'll probably talk about this a bit later on, but I, I do what's called a lip trill. Um, let's do it just, now, let's do it let's now. Do it, should we do it now? Let's do yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, not do anything can, later. Let's do it all now. <laughs> <laughs> you can join in with me if you like, Mary. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, so basically what you want to do, you might find it a little easier if you just raise your cheeks like this and what you want to do is you'll, you'll so, so sorry let's just explain for anybody who's listening yeah. while watching what you what you're doing is you're putting oh, yes. your cheeks up with your fingers on each well yes. what you want to do is you want to your your exactly you're putting your 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 fingers on your cheeks and you're raising your your cheeks up to your cheekbone yeah and you can hear by my the sound of my voice that i'm right that's what i'm doing so I, i'm sounding a bit weird as well now <laughs> exactly <laughs> So then that might, hopefully, that might help just to vibrate the lips. So just if we push uh -huh. it there. Okay. Little... <clears throat> That's perfect. Well done. I feel like a horse. <laughs> it's just like a horse, exactly. <laughs> so by doing this, this is called a non-voice fricative. We use our tongue and our teeth, um, our lips, which is um, the, 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 the front of our mouth. Because what the energy is, is focused on the front of our mouth, um, it's called bilabial that we're, when we use two lips together, yeah. um, we are focusing the energy on this area of the mouth. So it's mouth. So not so much any is energy is going onto the vocal folds. So then we can voice that fricative, um, quite easily. And what we do is we go up the range of the voice. We don't, the, the great thing about these exercises is that you don't necessarily have to be able to sing. You just need to be able to create a sound. So anytime, for instance, that you're, you're speaking, you might, for instance, take a, a note from wh wherever you are when you're speaking and create that. That's great. I, I can see why you wouldn't want to do this in public. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done it? Have you done this before? No, I did have singing lessons many uh, years ago. I dated a singer, and there he, we go. That's he, a bad move. It's a bad move. He serenaded <laughs> me, and I wanted to serenade him back. And <laughs> I, I, I probably like many uh, of uh, many people uh, listening, and actually, well, there may only be one listener. But um, I have had the experience at school where I was told, "Just mouth, don't make a sound, because you you're totally out of tune." And so I oh. thought. I thought I couldn't sing. Oh, that's awful. Isn't that awful? And I, that is I, awful. I did have singing lessons and I ended, up, I ended up singing at a couple of my friends' weddings. 
Oh, wonderful. That's fantastic. And uh, I've lost confidence now, so I want to talk to you separately on that. Okay. Anyway, okay, so so yes, we should warm up before a speech. You can do it as you go on stage. I wouldn't do that one as you're walking on stage. They might boo you off before you leave <laughs> But, okay, so listen, cold and flu season is yeah. upon us, right? Well, you know, I, always I, came, do... I, came down, I came down with a cold actually yesterday, so I, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, you might, you might be able to hear, if you know my voice, you might be yeah. able to hear, I'm, I'm actually a little bit hoarse. Um, oh, yeah. I, well, that just helps. Okay, so I mean, you know, I, <clears throat> as you can hear, actually, funny enough, I'm not putting this on. I do have a little bit of a cough. Um, now, the coughing is the worst thing you can do because it, it's it's a really it's a, a transient, uh, very percussive um, physical action that um, your vocal folds are. Well, firstly, your vocal folds are two centimeters long, so the the amount of energy that you're creating by coughing, so <clears throat> that sound is very 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 harmful for those vocal folds and so you really want to try to avoid coughing at all costs the best way to do that and I, I i appreciate that you can't bring a bottle of water on stage if you're if you're speaking all the time um you know um and especially a pint of beer i wouldn't <laughs> but I'd say, certainly wouldn't i certainly wouldn't do that do the pint of beer but if you i would definitely have a bottle of water um backstage or in the wings um, just before you're going to go on and, and take a sip if you do have, have a cough. The, 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 the best thing really for, for, for singers and speakers um, to, uh, to, to, to open up the airwaves really is, is very simply steam. And uh, steaming, I, not, you know, maybe in the hotel before, if you, if you, get the, you, know, if you can find a bowl uh, and, and literally, you know, the, 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 the traditional towel over the head uh, in in the steam and just to and that opens up the nasal air, the cavity and, and and just opens up everything and, and the pores as well. So that that's one thing. Uh, the definitely don't do whiskey um, or anything like that. Um, I really keep it lubricated. Water, steam. Um, I, this is um, this just is my my advice. But the honey and lemon with turmeric uh, is is always a is always a good one. That I that I use, but you 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 want to, um, I mean we, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this later or another time. But you you want to create a small amount of sound as possible. So what you're trying to do is push a small amount of air as possible. The 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 the, the, the more you push air over the vocal folds. So if you if for instance you speak a lot like this, and you're 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 if you're speaking from the throat, a lot of air is coming over. You're going to create more mucus more um more nasal sound and you're and you're putting more energy over the over that area and through through the larynx so it's really a case of controlling your breathing and using just a small amount of air and using the resonance that you can create um with certain exercises to um to create the sound rather than your throat to create the sound so every time i every time i speak i'm not really aware of it so much at the moment i'm waffling on a bit here sorry but i'm not I'm not particularly aware of it but i'm constantly engaging the abdominus muscles when i'm when i'm singing or speaking uh so so i'm not using hardly any any air going over the vocal folds at all the, tell me about this recipe then. So your turmeric, your your honey, and your lemon. Do you put that into hot water and yes, drink? Sorry. So that's that's I, I I you know what I I do this on on gigs all the time actually. That uh, so it, you know it's just it's hot water, honey, lemon, um, and the the, the, the turmeric is a is a is a fantastic um, spice for um, just just opening up the pores and uh, just making you feel a bit better really. You know, but but steam is 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 really the key. Okay, cool. And um, alcohol, you mentioned. I think that's probably the worst thing you can do, isn't it? Although it might calm your nerves, it probably it, it will tighten your vocal cords. Is that right? It's absolutely. It's 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 really really not a good idea at all um, to to use to use whiskey. It's um, you need you need all the areas free. Your larynx, uh, your throat, your vocal tract needs to be open and free. Your if if you're if you know if you're slightly inebriated, for instance, you're put you're perhaps. Um, very tight in the chest, so that's something that again mucus is going to fall onto fall onto the chest. So that steam is going to open that area up, and and really, you should be focusing on, ideally speaking, from this chest area and creating a creating a resonance from here, which is going to allow you um, to create a much deeper sound and more authority when you when you speak anyway. 
So what you were doing there, in case anybody's listening and not yeah. watching, you were, you were talking and you were banging your chest, the top of your well, chest, yeah? I'm, I suppose I'm just demonstrating. I mean, for, I'll give you a little exercise if you like, if, you don't, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, it's a very simple thing and it's just using ga, that sound. So it's, it's, the, it's the, probably the most percussive um, of a combination of consonant and vowel sounds. So, ga, 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 ga. So you're, you're, you're tapping your chest, you go, ga, 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 ga. That's great, that's really great, that's great, thank you. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's a, if, you, if you know Bob, Bob and McFerrin, he, he does it, um, what is he, what's he sing? Uh, um, and he's just creating this percussive resonance in his chest. And actually, he's not doing it for that reason. He's doing it because it's, it's quite an interesting way of, of performing that song. Uh, it's probably making a lot of noise here with the microphone. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, oh, stop, sorry. Stop, stop bashing your chest. <laughs> <laughs> stop bashing the chest. But that was, that was very you don't have good. To, just to demonstrate, just that ga 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 is is one way of or one extra just to get that resonance, start that resonance going in the chest. I can hear the resonance and the depth oh. of your voice. It's fantastic. Great. It's wonderful. Um, so, where was I going to go to go with this? Oh. Let's talk about tone. You've got a wonderful tone of voice. And um, I, I think I've got quite a deep tone for a woman. I don't know about mm. it because I, I, I think you hear your voice differently. Maybe I haven't. No, but I think I, you do. I do, thank you. Yeah. Um, and the reason I say thank you for that is because we know that um, a deeper voice carries more authority. Yeah. And uh, I do have female friends and female speakers that I work with that actually have very high voices, but they are yeah. all very authoritative in their world. They're mm. very successful, but mm. it's very hard when they sound like 10 year old children. Mm. <laughs> so sure. can, can you lower your voice? Mm. Is there a technique to do that? Yeah, absolutely. You, 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 you're not going to lower it by an octave. You're going to lower it maybe by a tone or a third in pitch. Um, but that makes a huge difference to, to where your range of your sound is. It's two or three things. It's very much, um, one thing is just being aware of the, of the area of, of the body that you're using to speak from. So if, you're, if, you, can, if you can tap into um, the chest, as we talked about that, that chest area, the chest resonance, then that's gonna really, that's gonna really help your, um, uh, the sound and the tone, and tone of your voice in, in, when it's, in producing the sound that you want. The second thing is the actually to think opposite, and, and most people are a little bit surprised about this, but if we can tap into the area of the voice, which is there's three voices, there's the chest, the head, and the falsetto. Um, it used, in classical music, it's, it's two voices, the high voice, which is the falsetto, ah, and the low voice, which is the ah, which is the, which is the chest voice. Now there is a, there's a break in the voice. So when you, when you sing, ah, and you make that sound, <laughs> which is horrible, I know. Tarzan, it's Tarzan. And, and uh, well, that's called the falsetto. So what's happening is that your, your, the, the, your, your main vocal folds are saying, are giving up and saying, thank you very much. So I'm going to let the other muscles around take over and they vibrate and take over the sound. It becomes very, very thin. thin. So um, that sound, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a wonderful area to explore for what, what are called harmonics. Now, harmonics are the um, extra ghost notes or the extra tones in your voice that give you the resonance and the gravitas that you need to create that sound if you're looking for a deeper voice. So by doing, uh, doing a couple of That's just one exercise, which is a bit silly, I know. Um, a, a couple of things like that. Or, for instance, um, if, if we can do, do we, if, you can, if you can sing a falsetto note and then um, let it drop to your chest voice. So I'll show you what I mean. Ah, 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 ah. That, that type of sound. You're, 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 you're dipping into the, to the harmonic area of the voice and allowing that to join up with the chest sound and that those harmonics help um help create the tone and the timbre of the sound so there's one a couple of things that we can do um i mean the, other, the most important thing that and, and perhaps we we might speak about this another time in more detail i have a couple of videos um in fact i think we're probably going to um we're going to share a video onto your website i think possibly maria we're definitely going to share lots of stuff is, yeah which would be great so what i'm a really 
strong believer in, in, in controlling the air and breathing correctly is um, 98% um, of, 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 of the reason why people aren't speaking correctly or at least speaking healthily. So everything is based around the breathing. So if we, um, if we breathe correctly from, I'm just gonna stand up for, for a second. So if we breathe correctly from this area, which is the, di um, sorry, the abdominus muscles, um, and around, you know, if we, if we breathe correctly, and I don't want to go too much about it, I don't know how long we've got, but um, again, there's, a, there's a, a, video, a video that I've done. But if we breathe from that area using the diaphragm, it's called diaphragmatic breathing, it's correct breathing. Most of us breathe very shallow, shallowly from, from this area, from the chest, and we take little sips of air. So for instance, if you're speaking very much from the throat area here, and your voice is slightly higher, um, your, your, the sip of air that you take is going to be very much from the chest and you're going to be speaking like that. If you can relax the jaw, if you can create more chest resonance here and you can breathe from below and you can support that air, you can then um, allow the chest cavity and the, and the rib cage to expand by breathing in properly and then by pushing the diaphragm up, you can control the amount of air and use actually a less amount of air than you would need to, allowing everything to resonate in its in proper way. That was amazing, the change in tone there. That was, I mean, we actually heard it demonstrated. I'm always fascinated that babies can make so much noise and they're yeah. very small. Well, I, I, have a, uh, I, have, I have two children. One of them is a 10-month-old um, uh, a, a baby, um, a person. And he, um, he's, in, I mean, you know, as you know, I mean, babies are incredible with, with, the, with the sounds that they make. He does this, this incredible piercing scream at the moment when he's, when he's unhappy which is um, actually splitting the, the notes and he, 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 what, what we call a whistle tone, um, which is r really, re I mean, I, I can't do it. You know, the, the older we get, the, the, the our, our much higher range is, is lost. And, and of course, I'm, a, I'm a, an adult as well. But um, they can, I mean, if you watch a baby breathe, actually, you'll see how to breathe correctly because they breathe from the diaphragm. They, they breathe using the abdominus muscles, um, which are the muscles just under the, just under the diaphragm. And those, those, those work like a corset all around to the bottom of your stomach and the bottom of your back. And to use those muscles correctly. I mean, first we need to be aware of where those muscles are. And I can give you a little tiny little exercise to do, which is if you're pretending to shoo a cat, for instance. So if, uh, just imagine that you're going shh, 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 like that. Just that, that exercise where we're just suppressing the air with the shh. Can, can um, I be can I be shushing my partner instead? You, you can you can absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch television. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, stop watching television. Talk to me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So shh, shh. Just try that for me now, Maria. Shh, shh. Perfect. That's not easy. Shh, shh. Yeah. Keep yeah. it forward. Shh, 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 shh. Great. That's great. And you can you hopefully you can feel down below that there's some some activity happening down there, and that's really that, that that's you, you're not going to get much closer than that than than suppressing the sound from here, and that's and that that will definitely make the abdominus muscles engage. So it's really it takes a bit of a it takes a bit of a while, and there's loads two or three exercises that you need to do just to be aware of those muscles and to start using them properly. Jimmy, I could talk to you all day about. <laughs> Sorry, I'm there's no, there's so much, there's so much that we don't know about an instrument that we use every day that sure. we're not using properly. And I mean, I, I know that I've had situations where I've lost my voice because I've mm. had to drain it at a cocktail party where I'm trying to get heard, and then next day I've got to yeah. speak to people and I've got a sore throat and I can't talk. Well, we, you know, just to interrupt, we 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 tend to speak from here. We tend to speak from the throat. And that's what's causing the damage. Yeah. So by shouting, if, if we're speaking like that all the time in a meeting, we're, can you hear what I'm saying? It's, this is no good. It's going it's, yeah. it's to be tight. Uh, it's going to be thin sounding. Uh, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you're, pu you're pushing too much energy, too much air over the vocal folds. Yeah. What you want to do is use much less air and, and create more of a pressure from, um, from down below using the diaphragm properly, using proper diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, it's not difficult to do. There's just a few exercises that would I, I could teach someone within an hour uh, Perfect. Or, or less. Perfect. Perfect. That's brilliant. So finally, I'm going to put you on the spot here because you, you sing jazz and I love jazz. Can you belt out a couple of, a couple of lines for us? Okay. Um, oh, okay. What, what should I sing? Um, 
It's not the pale moon that excites me, that thrills and delights me, oh no. It's just the minutes of you. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully we'll get this out before Christmas. <laughs> but if it's late, it'll be for the following year. Jimmy, thank you so much. That was, that was great a fun. Pleasure, Maria, pleasure. <laughs>